I'm sure you have burning questions for everybody here. They have some really great programs going on. So uh, just raise your hands and uh, we'll be walking out with mics. Uh, my question is for Cheryl. I really like the idea of going out to businesses, but I've got the impression at my library that we, it's like sort of like, the, is that advertising for another business as opposed to the library? Or are we partnering with a profit business? Sort of like, it's Berkeley. They're not into corporate or anything like that. So how would you approach that when normally we go, oh, we can't even put a poster up for another organization on a certain spot, even unless we're like part of it. So how would you handle trying to get that accomplished? Good question, thank you. Uh, so how I would handle it, it's a partnership. And I kind of, I, I'm pro-business, so I kind of like to work with businesses and nonprofits and corporations, but I'm very careful to kind of toe that line because I know a lot of libraries, they're not for that. So again, it would be a partnership. So they're just offering the venue they're offering the location. If they want to offer anything else, that's fine. Discount coupons, free pizza, free crafts, all good because it's in their venue. We're just providing the story time and that's it. Yeah. Next question. Uh, can, can, I, can I slip something in here? So one thing that I neglected to mention about that library kiosk, um, you know, I think you know, it's, it's, it's fairly common, at least I hear it quite a bit, that there's this notion in the library world that these pop-up libraries somehow detract or distract from what's going on at the local level in, in the branch. And quite the contrary, we feel like th this is really a library evangelism. You reach out to the community, you show people that libraries work, and then you bring them back. Our kiosk, um, one of the things that I, that I really think is cool is that the library card that patrons get for that kiosk can be used at any branch in the Alameda County Library. So once they figure out, and, and I am, I am, I'm 49 years old and still surprised at how many people don't know the breadth of things that the library offers. Um, but when they learn in these very small venues, um, and, I, and I absolutely love all of the ideas that are going on here, then what we find is that they come back into the branches and want to know more. Um, I love that you're streaming um, music, um, that, you know, that, that people can learn about all the things that we're doing. So it doesn't, I think, quite the contrary to taking away from what branches offer. It actually adds to it. This one's for Mana. I'm just wondering what kind of safety precautions the um, librarians had to learn about before getting out there and cycling. Any classes or? So Seattle does a very formal um, intake of people who are interested in becoming a bike fleet librarian. Um, Oakland is not that formal. <laughs> so it's, it's been completely on a volunteer basis. Um, I'm an avid cyclist, so I can sort of recognize when people are also avid cyclists, um, and you're using your own bike, so it's not like you have to learn how to navigate a totally new vehicle. Um, so yeah, it hasn't really come up for us, um, and we're not doing you know major rides with it. It's it's a pretty heavy trailer, um, so it's we try to keep it maybe within a five mile radius of the main library, um, but and. Also, it's um, one thing I forgot to mention is it's been a great way to engage um, paraprofessional staff. So non-librarians who are avid cyclists have you know come to me and said, "I want to take this out," and I say, "Yes, great." So that's how it got to First Friday or um, Off the Grid. Um, it wasn't me because I have a I, I can't do night events really because I have a young child. But um, it's been out in the community by not just myself. So and just to answer. Further, for in Berkeley, we had to pass a, a safety test and sign a waiver. And I think I passed the test, Dan, but I never <laughs> found out. Thank you. I have a question about the bike life. The actual trailer itself, uh -huh. did you contract to have it made? Did you purchase it from some organization? So Kick Trailer is the company that made it. Uh, he's a builder based in Oakland. And it was actually quite 
a nightmare working with him. Um, <laughs> he, he's a single builder. He's a single builder. He had a lot of life issues come up. Um, so he still owes me two custom hitches. Um, he also um, was supposed to deliver another trailer to uh, another organization and that fell through. Um, so as much as possible, I'd encourage you to go with a reputable company. Um, <laughs> I mean, I wanted to keep it local, right? I wanted to, I wanted to support um, Kick Trailer, who's based in Oakland, but, um, but you know, the, the final product that I got, I think is amazing. It handles really well. Um, it is a, because he hadn't built something of this scale before, um, to get it out of his workshop, he had to tear down a door. Um, <laughs> so it did have some challenges. Um, <laughs> yes. Great stories. Um, it's great to see how your uh, personal interests and passions really make these, really make these programs move forward. Um, so I have a question though. I am with the Friends and Foundation of the San Francisco Library here, and, uh, and, and you mentioned lots of partners that you're working with, really great stuff. Are you talking to your friends, your foundations, about um, ma making introductions so that they can actually raise money from some of these partners? Um, I can see some nods. I think it'd be a fabulous idea. That's sort of the next step. But really, um, these are the kind of people who are so thrilled to be a part of the library's um, history and also help to leverage things. And so uh, they would love probably to give some dollars that would help, uh, that would help leverage things. So uh, just, a, just a thought. Well, I, I'd like to just briefly say that, you know, I think it was uh, really ingenious of, the, of our, our prior county librarian who envisioned this project to put together a team that included the director of the Alameda County Library Foundation, she's here right now, and she raises money for us, Shanna Smith. So I, I absolutely agree with you that fundraising is a, an integral, vital part of all of this. This takes a lot of money to, uh, to keep going, to keep the wheels on the bus, but uh, the payoff is, is enormous. So thank you for bringing that point up. I can speak to that a little bit as well. Um, so as a, a county system, we have um, a friends groups in all of our different cities. And so um, one example of just how our friends groups have gotten involved in the Big Lift Little Libraries, the Half Moon Bay um, Friends of the Library, they've been working really hard to um, support a bond measure that would, among other things, um, pay for a new library in that community, which is really, really sorely needed. Um, and they've they've been um, you know doing a lot of legwork on that end, but they've also supported this project, which has connected them um, uh, with various different community organizations and individuals. So I see this as sort of um, just another way for them to get involved and reinforce their relationships in the community. So I don't know that it is exactly like translated to votes, but um, they have. It's been a way that they've kind of been working with us. So, and just to add, the friends did support the bike trailer by uh, purchasing much of the technology, and also uh, supported the purchase of bike locks at all locations. So, that's great. Since everybody else chimed in, I'll chime in too. <laughs> uh, pop up story time. Let me tell you, I like to think of it as a potato chip program. You cannot eat just one. So yes. They will come back, so yes, uh, or like a Costco sample, when you go there and you eat one, you want to eat it all. Question for Nicole. Could you talk a little more about how Big Lift Little Libraries ties into the rest of the library services? Sure, thanks. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I remember the name of the third lead partner. <laughs> And it's the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. <laughs> Pardon me, thank you. Uh, yes, I have a memory, it's awesome. Um, so uh, it's, it's interesting, it was a really quick turnaround on the project. We um, started talking with Hands On Bay Area and the Big Lift Collaborative in May. The Hands On Bay Area did the builds with um, Google and Genentech and late May, early June. Um, so it was a really, really quick turnaround. Um, we've been lucky to kind of um, exploit our, you know, inner library uh, delivery system to sort of move these things around. Um, 
you know, we've, we've gotten, uh, donations of books to, um, move into the li little libraries. Um, I'm not sure I'm getting at your question though. No, I'm not. The reason, the reason I'm asking is because little free libraries in some ways are sort of an anarchist alternative to our government run bureaucratic public libraries. Yes. And, um, I'm wondering if you have a way of using those as a way of pulling people into you know, your actual regular library services or if it's totally distinct. I would say we've kind of co-opted the, uh, you know, sort of anarchist spirit behind the little free library movement, um, you know, in order to, to slap the big lift on it and, and brand it in a way and focus them on, on children's services. Because it was such a quick turnaround, we haven't done as much branding as I would like to sort of um, promote our our services as well. But we have these great contacts who are um, sponsoring these libraries, so that's what kind of next on the list. So thanks for that question. Um, this is a question for Lisa. I was curious, um, with the other libraries, it sounds like the materials that are going out are coming from donations. Um, and I was wondering for those kiosks that are in those key places like the jails and what are the materials that are going out from there and do they have to come back to a branch or can you speak? Well, first of all, um, so we don't, we don't typically use donations. We want to provide, uh, because we, we view these as really sort of branch libraries, as in branch of the tree. So we really want our users to experience, um, with some stipulations, the same experience they'd have um, in a library branch. Uh, for instance, in, in, in jail, uh, you know, and this has been, you know, much to the chagrin of many folks with badges, but with very few exceptions, we allow, we, we have in our collection any, any type of book that you might walk into a branch and get. Now, of course, that doesn't include um, books on how to make weapons, how to make bombs, you know, pornographic material, but other than that, we, we believe that these are library patrons who are deserving of a library collection. So the books are all new. Um, and we find that to be really useful. We find that to be a really positive experience for people. We try to have the same new releases, or, and obviously not the same breadth of new releases. Each one of those machines, and those machines are actually not in jail yet, but we are looking towards that happening. But those machines only hold at any one time 300 books, but we go through them quite, quite frequently. And we are now refilling about once a week. We're refilling those books about once a week. Um, Patrons can either return to the site, our staff comes out, picks it up, goes back, checks it in, or they can return to any Alameda County Library branch. So it is a library experience. And sorry to jump in, I feel I should clarify. The children's books are all purchased by the Children's Services Department. It's just the adults that are getting donations. <laughs> <laughs> Another question for Lisa. Is how if you walk into one of these places and you don't have a card, how do you get a book? Do you have to have an Alameda County card already? Or you said something about so they will function with regular Alameda County Library cards, but we have special pulse cards. Uh, a patron would fill out uh, an application for the card at the branch. We they get and the and the card is activated on site. So they can use it whether or not they fill that, ap that application out. But once we get that application back, so that card's good for 120 days, once we get that application back, we take it, process it, get all their information in the system, and then that card is good just like any other library card. And they can get that on site. Yeah. From, from, and, and, it, and it generally, we have a great buy-in from staff at these facilities, so the staff are the ones that are actually providing the library card applications, which is very nice. And, and, I, and I should say, I hasten to add here, that those machines are as used by staff as they are by, by uh, the clients of the agencies, which is fantastic. So I apologize if I miss this, Lisa, but I was curious, where are some of the venues where these machines are? Thanks for asking. So the Alameda County District Attorney's Office has something called the Family Justice Center in downtown Oakland, 27th. Um, there's one there, that's a one-stop shop for victims of violence. 
Uh, we have one at Child Support Services in Pleasanton. That's in Alameda County Library, or excuse me, Alameda County Department. We are due on the 23rd of this month to open um, a new one at Abode Family Services Sunrise Village in Fremont. So, yes. Okay, are there any more questions? We have time for like one more. All right. Well, uh, in that case, then we're going to take a break right now. <laughs>